Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Harring, founder of the Marvel and DC Databases. Welcome to episode 5, Comic Book Showcase. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a recent controversy that came up as a result of the cover of uh, Teen Titans number 1, drawn by Kenneth Rockefort. And uh, it was uh, an interesting response by uh, Janelle Asselin, that uh, was a guest artist, or sorry, guest writer on the Comic Book Resources uh, blog, and she had a few things to say about the particular art and the art style and the content thereof on Teen Titans number one. Um, why don't, uh, Rab, why don't you tell us about a little bit about uh, how that went down, what happened? Well, this is all just from reading her article and following her on Twitter. Uh, she wrote a critique of the art style, and it was well-rounded, but it also sort of focused very heavily on the fact that something else was rather well-rounded. Um, it, it, it focused very plainly on the uh, depiction of Wonder Girl, who was very disproportionate <laughs> and booby. So I, I think it brought up issues about what it means to sexualize a character who's supposed to be a teenager, and if it's supposed to appeal to teens of all sexes and ages, then maybe she should look a little more normal. And then <laughs> the response, of course, was that uh, Brett Booth, an art not the artist in question, but an artist who is, I suppose, a friend of Kenneth Rockefeller, who uh, is the artist on the previous volume of Teen Titans, he took issue with the fact that she was not positive in her criticism. He, she didn't offer any positive uh, response, and he felt that wasn't fair, and then that turned into a bunch of misogyny. So that's where we're going with that. <laughs> so I guess uh, my question to you folk would be, is there a definitive line in terms of what is appropriate, what is not appropriate in terms of either body shapes or depictions <clears throat> in pose or in context or in um, any sort of um, message, whether it's uh, an innuendo or whether it's an explicit message in the depiction of specifically women, but really any character, um, and if that if there is a definitive line on on when something's gone too far, how do we um, how should how should we react, or how how is it appropriate for people to react uh, to those covers, those that art, or even uh, you know that uh, those descriptions, text or or otherwise? I think there's this kind of weird uh, line where Every time it happens, and it's always like little isolated incidents, or at least the ones that we hear about, um, it always feels like people are making a big deal out of one cover, uh, which is kind of weird because it's an issue that's everywhere, but the only way to take it on is by dealing with it one cover at a time. And every time the outcry from people defending that type of art is this, like, they're taking away our sexy ladies! And that, like, from a large... I, I can understand that, as I, I definitely enjoy a sexy lady in my comic book every once in a while. The problem is that they're everywhere. And I completely agree. I like, since, I don't know, the days of heavy metal comics, we've seen to, like, this creep of, you know, sexualized men and women in comic books where all the superheroes now seem to be these large buff, like, very muscly, like, very over-exaggerated with, like, large cod pieces, and women are always very robust, very voluptuous women, giant racks, and it's like, why do you need this in your comic books? This is, like, we should be focusing on the story. I understand that that's, like, appealing to some people, but it seems like from, like, the image comic days, uh, certain... Uh, 90s artists uh, always drew such um, like exaggerated characters, and it just caricatures. To, yeah, it just it went too far, I think, and we've lost that um, nice uh, non-complicated art style that we saw in the Silver Age of comics. So, it's so I think of... so. I think one of my biggest problems is it's not representative of. Well, human population. So, if you were to, you know, walk down the street of New York City, which is depicted in, say, Marvel's comics, and just, you know, look at the sort of the, we'll say the non 
superhero characters and you just compare them to the average person on the street, I think the body types are probably even not the, the named characters are probably a little uh, disproportionate in terms of you know how real people look. But when it comes to the people in the foreground, the people whose stories get told, um, it's so far out of whack that um, it's it's much like Hollywood. I'll put it that way. That that um, the people that typically get the the leading roles, the A list celebrities, have a certain appearance to them, or at least the majority of them do, and it's not um, in proportion with the rest of the population of Earth. I've seen it said somewhere that comic book art, or maybe not just comic book art, book art but the depictions are what men want to be and what men want, and not no consideration for women, but what men want to be is the big muscular dirt dorks versus and what they want, which is sexy, disproportionate, weird, tiny waist women, apparently. That's not what I want, but that's what they think we want. Yeah, there's uh, uh, people talk about that a lot, where like He-Man isn't really... Um, some people bring that up as like, well, He-Man is just as unrealistic as Barbie is, but He-Man isn't exactly what women find super sexually attractive. He's more of like a male power fantasy. And I think within the past couple of years we're seeing a much greater shift where people really do want to read more stories about people who resemble real life and look like them. I personally, I would kill to have a superhero book about a guy as fat as me. That is my dream. When I choose costumes for Comic-Con, I got like Bouncing Boy from Legion of Superheroes the blimp from the Inferior Five and the Blob, and that's it. Zillia Zox. <laughs> and Zillia Zox. I completely agree. You know, like one of the traits I find most appealing in women is their sass, and you won't find a lot of writers who can really write female sass very well. But there's been some of the Black Widow comic books uh, as of lately because she's been brought more into the fold. Um, where you see that sass come out, and some people have been very good writers, and it doesn't matter what the comic book art is. Like I don't uh, like the voluptuous Black Widow, but if it's like a little bit toned down, I really appreciate that. So, Alana, what do you think uh, has been a good example, uh, in your opinion, of someone that sticks pretty true, or maybe even not just a, a particular artist, but also a, a comic book or a comic series that is stuck to what your personal opinion of um, proportion and reality is. What, 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 do, you, what do you think? I, I really feel like I have to ignore the art as much as possible in most of the books because it, it really is, they all are depicted like huge chested, tiny elongated waisted, um, uh, butt and boob in the same panel uh, women. All the time, so I, I I focus on on the writing as much as I can, and uh, and and hope that there are some good stories. But I can't even I can't even think of an artist that 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 I've uh, Gabriel Delato, his like painted works um, tend to be a little bit more realistic. What about Alex Ross, for example, who's known okay. for realism? Yeah, yeah, Alex Ross, definitely. And how much would you say that it detracts for you personally? Uh, like, comic is obviously a medium of equal parts art to text and, and story, and uh, as opposed to novel or as opposed to, you know, just you know movie, which is more visual than, than anything. Well, how much did you say? would you say it takes away from the experience of a comic book for you when the art has to be, as you say, ignored? Well, there's different degrees of having to uh, ignore the art. Uh, personally, I uh, read a lot of comics in the 90s, and right about around 98, uh, I, I did stop reading for a few years um, when a lot of the anime influence started to be seen in the Marvel comics. Um, uh, I remember I, was, I had a subscription to X Factor, uh, and right around... Right around issue one, uh, 112 or so, they got a new artist. I don't remember who it was at the time. Um, but everything was so exaggerated. The, the, the feet were, the, were about twice the size of the head of the character. 
Um, that whole uh, Astro Boy giant boots were on uh, the characters, and I, you know, I, I literally stopped reading it because I was, as much as I was enjoying the story, I just couldn't, I couldn't pay for that. Yeah. Was it Jeff Matsuda by any chance? Yeah, yeah. That was around Jamie's uh, rebirth, wasn't it? Well, he died in I think issue ninety. Well, no, what issue one hundred? Um, but it wasn't until like one twenty nine or something like that that he came back. So it was, there was a couple of years, but right in the middle there, it just got unreadable. You know what comics I really enjoyed the art on, and like they portrayed women, I thought very well was a lot of the fables comics. I thought they did very well of like some of the certain art styles that they had in there for the women. There wasn't too. Um, Booby. I think that's a nice thing about Vertigo, which is that they can tell, they can focus on story because they don't have this pressure of having to appeal to teens or having to appeal to people who love boobs that much. I mean, they can put boobs, they can actually show boobs in a Vertigo comic, but you you don't read it for the boobs. You read it for the good story, which might happen to have boobs in it. Was I was gonna say uh, I do. There's a part of me that kind of wishes because people tra- people talk all the time about how you know like it's not really like Batman and like male characters aren't being sexualized in the same way. Part of me kind of wishes we, we could just get like a month where all of the companies would agree to sexualize male characters in the exact same way. No like desexualize. Just make it. Even playing around for everybody, like have Batman running around with like, oh, I hope my bulletproof nipple tassels protect me from gunfire. And uh, why is my why is my dick so hard while I'm fighting the penguin? I would love it if we could see that. If only really there was some sort of initiative of some variety, some sort of Hawkeye initiative or something. Yes. But women aren't really interested in that. That doesn't fly like it flies for male readers. You, no, you they're not. For the they entire would, population would of women. It? I'm not speaking on behalf of the entire population of women, but I know quite a few female comic book readers, and I, I, as I know them as people, I don't think that they would be, like, I don't think there's that market for that. Uh, you can speak there for that, Alana. There supposed to be. It's supposed <laughs> Wait, to there, punish there, them. There, <laughs> Just to be clear, there absolutely is not. In my, like, crazy Batman dick outline fantasy, no, women would not, nobody would enjoy it. The whole point is that it would make people uncomfortable and people would understand why it makes women uncomfortable. I can't speak for women, of course, but I feel that there... I think that if I was asked, I would... If I was asked what my favorite comic books were then I could say, if I listed them, girls would appreciate the books that I listed in comparison to the books that someone else listed. I think this because I feel like I am a fan of books that girls are supposed to be interested in, like supposed to be interested in, like Sandman. Actually, that's another story. Never mind. (laughs) But (laughs) Superman Wonder Woman is supposed to appeal to women, and I really like that book because it's not... Well, it does have a lot of action, but because it's relationshipy, I like the relationshipiness. I like the talking. I like, I like talking in books. I like people to have relationships and conversations that have no relevance to the massive plot that's happening. As long as there is a plot, I need there to be that. But you know what? I've never, I've never uh, met another female comic book reader who was as upset by exposition as uh, a, a lot of the dudes that I know. What do, what do we think about um, comic book characters in other media and how they're portrayed? So I want to give a couple of specific examples. Uh, Smallville, um, the Green Lantern movie, and say um, uh, Lois and Clark, which, you know, my favorite, apparently my favorite show of all time. Lois and Clark, uh, The New Adventures of Superman. Um, so, um, you know, women not having any power or, you know, always being the damsel in distress, notwithstanding, um, you know, how do we feel that some of the more, um, uh, you know, human aspects and some of the more non caricaturizations of those women were portrayed in, in non comic book media, even though they came from comic book characters? Well, in Smallville, Smallville they did have a couple of strong female characters in that uh, series, if I'm not mistaken. I wasn't a huge fan of the series, 
but I have seen a bit of the earlier episodes, and I don't remember her name. I want to call her Chloe, but blonde. Yes, Chloe. Um, yeah, she was a fairly strong female character that was able to, you know, stand alongside Clark in episodes, and I thought it was really, really good. And she was not sexualized at all, um, and would like I don't remember seeing an episode where she was the damsel in distress as like a typical damsel in distress, but um, I thought that they handled it very well in that uh, series. I don't want to harp on about it too much, but this is a thing that I had a huge problem with in Smallville, which was that every time some chick on... I'm going to get in real trouble for saying chick, but some girl on Smallville would get in trouble or not get in trouble. Every time they would fall in love with some guy, Clark would be like, you can't fall in love with that guy. He's a really bad guy. And she'd be like, no, I love that guy. And then by the end, <laughs> Clark was right. That guy was a bad guy. Every single time. There was no yes, she was right to fall in love with that guy. It's always, this guy is doomsday for the entire season. <laughs> he's doomsday. And he's no, going to kill everybody. Even Jimmy Olsen is an example of that. Smallville just especially has a really, really disproportionate supervillain population. <laughs> That's true. It's those darn meteor rocks. <laughs> Every attractive person in Smallville is a villain. Well, better than better than Game of Thrones, where everyone is basically doomed to die. So don't do anything if you live in Westeros. Um, do you know so, where your children are at 10 p.m.? Are your children out touching meteor rocks and being affected by them? It starts at home. <laughs> Talk to your kids about meteor rocks. I think that's about as good a place as any to uh, to wrap our conversation on. Uh, it's 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 a, an interesting topic, and I think we could go on for a while longer. Uh, in terms of not only the way that characters are, are depicted in the books, but in various other media, but also the way um, female writers, female artists, um, other professionals in the comic book industry, whether it's professional um, you know, business people in the comic book industry, how they're all treated, um, I think that's perhaps a topic for another show, but I, I, we'll have more conversation uh, on the forums and uh, on Twitter and Facebook and uh, by all means comment uh, comment below and, and tell us what you think what some great some great art was some great depictions some <coughs> particular offenders in terms of artists or, or uh, writers and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you guys next week thank you for to Billy, Rab, Mike and Alana for joining me and uh, see you guys next week and that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Billy Aerosmith. You might recognize me from the character I play on the uh, Wikia Comic Showcase podcast. We make a lot of jokes tonight in our program, and we have a lot of fun. Uh, but one thing that's not fun is Meteor Rocks. Uh, I personally, I've seen a lot of families destroyed, uh, good people, kids who worked hard. Talk to your kids. Go home tonight. If you take one thing away from this podcast, talk to your kids about Meteor Rocks. Thank you. Have a good night.